So this is a video that talks about early childhood education. Welcome to a brief discussion on how to support teaching number and operations to young children, age two through grade three, using a developmental progression from the IAS practice guide, Teaching Math to Young Children. Let's get started. There are five recommendations in the practice guide and all are based on a systematic review of research conducted by researchers and practitioners with expertise and experience in early math development. We will discuss recommendation one, which suggests that we teach children number and operations through a developmental progression. So what do we mean by teaching children through a developmental progression? In order to effectively instruct students and support them in moving to the next step in the progression, teachers must know what skills children already possess. A developmental progression is simply a sequence of learning that provides teachers with information on what these steps along the developmental path are. Developmental progressions exist for many math topics. However, for recommendation one in the practice guide, expert researchers and practitioners present the topic of number knowledge in one particular sequence. Some math curricula and assessments will provide other examples of different developmental progressions in math, such as measurement and shape. Expert researchers and practitioners suggest five steps to carry out recommendation one. The first step in the developmental progression is to provide opportunities for children to practice recognizing the total number of objects in small collections, one to three items, and labeling them with a number word without needing to count them. The ability to recognize the number of objects without counting, also known as subitizing, is critical for children to learn more complex skills, including counting larger collections and eventually adding and subtracting. Teachers can model subitizing for children easily throughout the day. Instead of asking a child to put on gloves to go outside, say, put on your two gloves, or gather any small collection of objects, one to three box or counters, and ask, how many objects do I have without counting? During mealtime, ask children to quickly name without counting how many pieces of snack they have on their plates, or how many cups or napkins are on the table. It's a good idea when practicing subitizing to start with the small set of just one to three objects that are the same, and then move to larger sets of objects. Once children get the hang of it, introduce objects that are the same but have different attributes such as colors or sizes, and then eventually unrelated objects. This will support children's development of a more general concept of number. The practice guide also provides instructions for a simple hiding game to practice subitizing with small groups of children. The second step in the developmental progression under recommendation one is to promote accurate one-to-one -one counting as a way to identify the total number of items in a collection. You may hear children recite numbers in order at young ages. However, correctly counting a collection of objects can be a challenging step in the developmental progression. Teachers can model one-to-one -one counting beginning with small sets of one to three items and repeat the last number word used in the counting sequence. Younger children who are familiar with small sets of numbers will begin to learn that counting is a method for answering the question, how many? Eventually, children will count larger collections accurately, and with practice and support, they will figure out that the last number in a set is the same as the total number without having to recount. Teachers can challenge children by asking them to count things other than objects, such as claps, stomps, or hops. At the end of each counting sequence, be sure to ask children, how many did you count without counting to support the development of cardinality? Or try playing a simple game of hiding objects that have been counted with the hidden stars game. It is common for children to make counting errors as they are learning. The practice guide provides suggestions for teachers to correct these errors. 
The third step in the progression under recommendation one is to provide opportunities for children to use number words and counting to compare quantities. Once children are able to accurately use subitizing or counting strategies to answer how many objects are in collection, they're ready to compare numbers. First, children need to have a vocabulary understanding of comparison words. At mealtime ask, which place has more or fewer grapes? After children respond, it's a great opportunity to discuss what more and fewer mean. Second, provide examples for children to compare when amounts are equal and explain what it means to have the same amount of something. Once children are comfortable making verbal comparisons, encourage them to use counting to compare the size of two collections. For example, children can practice making comparisons while playing games that involve keeping score. Children can also mentally compare neighboring number words in a number list. Children can see which numbers are more or fewer based on the positions of the numbers on the list. A number list helps children see that numbers earlier and later in the list represent smaller and larger collections. The fourth step in the developmental progression under this recommendation is to encourage children to label collections with number words and numerals. Once children can recognize, count, and compare quantities, teachers can introduce numerals to children as a way to represent a quantity. Sometimes children may already recognize numerals in the world around them before they're able to count. However, once children have a foundation for understanding number and counting, it may become easier for them to learn about numerals. Teachers can pair numerals with collections of objects around the classroom so that children start to learn, for example, that the numeral, objects, and the spoken word represent the same thing. For children who do not yet recognize numerals, teachers can put dots next to the numeral and word for children to count and figure out what the numeral indicates. The practice guide provides directions to play the game concentration, numerals and dots, which can help children practice identifying and reading numerals. The last step in the developmental progression under recommendation one is to encourage children to solve basic problems once they develop fundamental number skills. Children can use their subitizing, counting, and comparing strategies to perform simple adding and subtracting problems. Children can apply counting strategies by combining or removing objects from a group and then count to figure out how many they have in the group. You might try presenting more difficult problems with slightly larger sets of objects as children problem solving develops. Everyday routines provide opportunities for children to solve problems too. Mealtimes are great opportunities for children to make authentic comparisons using adding and subtracting or more or fewer. As children receive or eat their snacks, they can count how many pieces they have. Depending on children's counting skills, ask questions such as, how many will you have after I give you one more? Or, how many will you have if you share a piece with your friend? Because the number of snacks will naturally change throughout the meal, this provides good practice for understanding comparisons of more and fewer and combining or removing objects. For further information related to teaching math to young children, please take some time to review the full practice guide. Also, visit the RHEL Central website for more education research and resources to support schools and student outcomes. See how awesome. There are so many, many, many resources out there. Um, just out there. And, it's, and the companies. And we're not going to listen to that. <laughs> and I'm going to stop this share and end the video, but I just wanted to share some resources.